This One Degree Outside video is brought to you by the Topsfield Fair. At the Topsfield Fair, fun is around every corner. Experience the thrills, flavors, and entertainment you won't forget. From award-winning bites to exciting live shows, prize-winning fun awaits you at the Topsfield Fair, October 3rd to the 13th. Pattern predictions here at the One Degree Outside Weather Network. Looking out to the next two weeks. Now remember, you can always get the 14-day forecast from our app. Totally free and five stars waiting for you in the App Store and Google Play. And it works worldwide. We also now have rolled out all of our videos and updates as needed during impactful weather at OneDegreeOutside.live or on your smart TV. Open up the YouTube app and do a search for One Degree Outside Network. We provide all of this free of charge. We have no corporate ownership, no investors. You saw Topsfield Fair as a partner of ours, which we're so appreciative of, and you. You support us, and that's why we talk about memberships. Membership.onedegreeoutside.com if you're interested in finding out more about how you can pledge your support. All right, let's go ahead and dive into it here. We'll start out with the jet stream winds aloft, the fast river of air high in the sky that steers our storm systems. We're coloring them in for the faster winds. And as I put things into motion over the course of this week, there is a change in the pattern which is the reason we have rain in the forecast. <laughs> That's because, look at this, we finally start to get, yeah, some out of the Pacific and some flow out of the Gulf, and you'll put it together and you've got moisture that actually carries up into the Northeast for the first time in weeks. It does appear to be a one-week special because by the time we get to, let's say, next weekend and uh, the week thereafter, heading into the early part of October, we start to get our flow out of the West. Good thing we do. Good thing we do, because when we get toward the uh, final days of September, look what we do. I've talked with you about this in the pattern predictions and monthly forecasts, right? That window to the tropics, you've got energy that digs down in the southeast, an upper level low. That orients the winds out of the south a lot. If you've got high pressure off the coast, does the same thing. There will be some tropical creatures that need to be watched in here, and it does mean the southeastern U.S. has to watch it very carefully. Here at home, because the jet stream starts to change, puts us back into the drier pattern in a faster westerly and northwesterly pattern aloft. Unlikely we would be dealing with that directly here in New England. It does boost up the chance of precipitation, certainly to have moisture finally back in the forecast. You're going to get a dose of rain. And it's a decent, meaningful dose that we'll look at here in just a second. The chance of showers that you see next week, well, that's back to the same old, same old, where you get a disturbance that comes through and it could be a scattered shower, but it doesn't really mean that much in terms of amount. So we got to make what we can here out of the upcoming first week of this two-week pattern, and we need it. The water table needs it, right? We're in extreme drought in portions of Tennessee and Arkansas, up to Ohio and West Virginia, and of course, right here at home in New England, central and northern New England, extreme drought area that you see in red and still a severe drought for the area that's in that brown coloring. So how much are we getting over the course of the next 10 days? Maybe not the full two week period, but the next 10 days, which is when most of this happens. In fact, most of it happens in the next seven days or so. Notice you've got a stripe. Yup, there you go. You get that Pacific and Gulf moisture coming together. The yellow is actually over two inches of rain. Uh, so most of us are between at least a half inch and an inch and a half. But yes, yeah, some of us, central New England may be able to squeeze out too. Might be nice to see that displaced a little farther north and right over that extreme drought zone. But look, we'll take what we can get. And it's a nice break in the pattern. I mentioned, though, it probably is only a one week break. We'll go to the 500 millibar uh, heights. And what this is, if you don't watch off an average temperature through a big column of the atmosphere, the colder colors, colder temperatures, warmer colors, warmer temperatures. You're going to see a couple things happen as I put things into motion. Again, as we get out to next weekend, got to be careful. You get that upper level low over the southeast, high pressure off the coast. We'll see. Don't take the position of these tropical systems literally this far out. But the idea is that it's going to either get ushered north just off the coast or get pulled in toward the southeast, but not likely to happen here at home unless something major were to change in the pattern um, because of the fact that you start to get back to the westerly wind of the jet stream level at that point. And eventually, look at this, by October 2nd, getting ready for the kickoff of the Topsfield Fair on October 3rd, you've got a northwest jet stream. This opens the door to what will end up being more cold fronts from Canada, dry air, nothing in terms of big, big tropical moisture. And that's why I say this week of rain reprieve that we get is just a one-week difference, and you're back to the old pattern. Look what's happening on the uh, bigger picture up in the North Pole, though. This is a lot of chilly air that's building. As a matter of fact, by the time we get a week into October, we're likely looking at sub-zero temperatures in parts of Greenland, sub-freezing air for most of the upper uh, northern latitudes here, and some of the colder than normal air that'll be spreading into parts of northern Russia. Uh, so, yes, it's a sign that the seasons are changing, and the globe most certainly is feeling the response of the diminished sunlight across the northern latitudes, right? 
at the surface for temperature here at home, look, generally our daytime highs are going to be running seasonable or maybe a little above, certainly in the first part of the period. Second part of the period, we kind of reverse that as you get those cold fronts and the dry air from Canada allows for some chilly nights and cooler days, but again, drier air that moves in. You can definitely see the impact in terms of the high temperature. You do have a couple of days that are pretty mild in the first half of the two week period, and then you're much, much cooler in the second half. Even though that chance of rain goes down, it's just that you got a cooler air by nature, and that definitely plays into the overnight lows. No concern with frost. This is New England average over the first half of the two week period, but next week, yeah, here we go, dropping down to what will be the lower 40s as a New England average low. And that means you can bet that central and northern New England back to getting frost again as we head into next week. Just a reminder, as the weather changes and your gear changes, why not make us a part of it? Swag.1DegreeOutside.com. It's a fun way to support us. That's how things look for now. We'll look forward to seeing you with updates, those insight videos, the deep dive into meteorology in the next several days. We'll take care of the timing of all this rain and all these changes, of course, and we issue those every weekday at 1DegreeOutside.com, 1DegreeOutside.live, and atop the home screen of our app. 